Hello, welcome to the Friday, June 10th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording again from Jacksonville, Florida. I think I mentioned yesterday how Qbot is uh, taking advantage of the unpatched Felina vulnerability in Microsoft Windows. Now, today we got a walkthrough of a sample by Brad. As typical for Brad, he shares the sample as well as network traffic and indicators of compromise he extracted. So great to sort of walk through it and see how to analyze these type of samples. The malicious email will likely arrive as part of a hijacked threat, a technique that uh, we have talked about before a few times, where a bot is injecting emails into ongoing email exchanges it finds on infected systems. This, of course, makes it less likely that a user receiving an email like this will consider it suspicious because after all it's coming from a colleague they just exchanged emails with. The Felina exploit is actually used uh, late in the infection chain here. A user will initially receive an HTML document, uh, then they will get a zip file if they click on the link. The zip file contains then a disk image and only once the victim opens the disk image, the Word document that uh, is contained in the disk image will take advantage of the Felina vulnerability and install the actual malware. Also of interesting, it sort of uses some living off the land attacks here. mp setup.exe is the binary that is being used then to pull in additional state the complex execution chain, I think, is probably uh, to evade uh, network detection techniques, also mark of the web, uh, kind of to avoid some of this. Pratt observed that uh, the MS uh, debug trace tool that's sort of being used to as part of Felina exploit actually does display the pop-up that asks for a passkey. It typically does that, and in some of these sort of proof of concept exploits, you may not have seen that uh, because the calculator that's often being launched as part of a proof of concept exploit is covering that up. So that may be a tip to give to your users if they see uh, this pop up asking for a pass key that this may be an indication that someone is attempting the Felina exploit against them. It doesn't matter what you do with the pop-up, so uh, you obviously don't have a passkey. The scenario here is that uh, you're being given a passkey by some uh, support person that will then receive the output of uh, the MSDT tool. But uh, yeah, so it pops up, uh, but the exploit runs even if you don't enter a passkey. Now, with exploit campaigns like this, uh, it's often quite hard to figure out how successful they are. Now, QBot is around for quite a while. They must be doing something right, otherwise they would probably be stopping. Anti-phishing company uh, Pixim uh, now was able uh, to uh, do just that uh, for a large Facebook phishing campaign that lasted from September last year uh, through May. At least that's how long they looked at it. Now, in this case, and we have seen this before in phishing campaigns, where uh, attackers make some mistakes, like, for example, uh they keep the, the logs accessible where they are collecting credentials. So that's one way I can figure out uh, how many uh, people, for example, provided credentials there. In this case, they also uh, actually found the internal monitoring system that the attacker used. What was interesting there is they used hundreds of different phishing URLs, but all of these uh, URLs, when they were hit, uh, reported back to this uh, monitoring uh, application that they had. Now, in this case, it was Facebook phishing and the phishing message itself did not arrive as an email but instead as a Facebook message and they used compromised Facebook accounts and of course to spread the message and that of course sort of led to a little bit sort of a snowball effect here uh, they observed about uh, just from one of the phishing sites uh, they observed 0.7 million visits in 2021 and so far in 2022 8 million against the same uh, phishing URL so it's definitely increasing uh, the number of victims here. A total of 17 million hits were observed across the different uh, phishing sites based on that monitoring application they found. Now, 
The next step, of course, is figuring out how much money do these hackers make. And uh, here they sort of had to hit a little bit of a lucky break in that researchers from OWASP actually reached out to the attacker. And the attacker responded claiming that they are getting $150 for a thousand visitors. And if you're looking at like, you know, tens of millions of uh, hits here, uh, pick some kind of suggest that they make like you know, millions of dollars here. Now, $150 per thousand visitors sounds a little bit high to me. This may be for sort of unique credentials or so they're harvesting and not necessarily every visitor enters credentials. Also, you know, some visitors may visit the same site multiple times. So not 100% sure, but uh, still, you know, they're making plenty of money with this. Uh, if you're taking the $150 number, you're sort of uh, at uh, face value to some extent. Pixum has shared some of the pointers, in particular when it comes to attribution. They sort of have some uh, hints here uh, who may be behind this particular scam. And they shared those with law enforcement. So maybe if that results in anything, we'll learn more about how much money was really made there. And we got a few vulnerabilities that you may need to address. Uh, the NCC group released a report with details about an unauthenticated command injection vulnerability in the Fujitsu Sentry Store Control Center. Couldn't come at a better time. I talked uh, this week about backup vulnerability. Uh, this centric store control center is used to manage uh, backups, these sort of virtual uh, tape backup uh, devices. And uh, you're able to execute commands as uh, the web user here, but uh, the appliance also has a fairly old Linux kernel. So there are some privileged escalation vulnerabilities an attacker would have access to. And Sykesell released an advisory for some of their older, as they call it, legacy firewalls, which means uh, there is no patch available for this. They recommend just to buy a newer model. Now, the vulnerability itself, they call it a control line feed injection vulnerability. Sounds to me like an HTTP response splitting. That's how I would call it, and so the threats uh, they're outlining here. But um, yeah, so... Get rid of your firewall, buy a new one, just uh, don't dump the old firewall in my alley and uh, dispose of it responsibly. And a crew of researchers from Mozilla identified several vulnerabilities in a video conferencing solution, uh, Meeting Owl Pro and uh, Whiteboard Owl. They're both coming from the same uh, company. The vulnerabilities, well, they start with sort of authentication bypass via Bluetooth, but then also, for example, leaking uh, password hashes and a total of five vulnerabilities. So far, one of the vulnerabilities has been patched. The other four, well, the manufacturer promises uh, updates in the coming weeks. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. And if you had any issues uh, the last two days uh, with our RSS feed for the podcast, I should have it fixed. If you're still having problems, uh, please let me know. And please always uh, reach out if you uh, have problems like this. Hard for me to sort of monitor all the different uh, podcast applications people are using. And that's it for today. Talk to you again on Monday. Bye.